Good morning, City of David. It brings me so much pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this week's edition of the COD News. My name is Michael. Last Wednesday, from all over the world, we all celebrated the International Women's Day and the Handmaiden's Women in Leadership Series took us through the theme, Leading Women, Leveraging Technology in the Marketplace. Here's a highlight of how the day went. On Wednesday, the 8th of March, all eyes were on the Handmaiden's Women in Leadership Conference. Women from all works of life trooped in their numbers as the conference got on the way. with the United Nations International Women's Day theme of innovation and technology for gender equality, this conference focused on leading women leveraging technology in the marketplace. The conference began with the opening speech by our founder and convener, Dr. Shiju Iluyomade, who inspired and encouraged the everyday woman to come out of her shell and embrace technology indeed. Today, Handmaiden's Women in Leadership is here to actually look at how do we build this barrier? The SDG goal number five is talking about bridging the gap, equity. In Nigeria, a couple of years or moons ago, the women were not allowed. They sent the boy child to the school. Now, you are driving cars, but somebody made a way. Somebody picked up that key and refuse to be cowed down or pushed down. I was taught to actually go for the very best, to push against all odds, to say to myself, I can. I want you to look at the woman next to you with your embrace sign and tell her, today you are going to embrace equity. You are going to bridge that gap so fast. We may not need to wait to 2030 to achieve the goal. The men were not left out as they also featured in the discussions early on. The children from the Riverbank School taught us about the daily dangers and how to protect ourselves online 
with a live showcase of their very own inventions and how they have mastered complex tech at such early ages. The keynote addresses were very thought-provoking, as it was shared that digital revolution will indeed present unprecedented opportunities for women and girls with a sharp focus on how we can channel technology to drive equality and encourage greater equity in the marketplace. There were panel sessions which were thoughtfully insightful and the audience were able to join in on the conversations with practical and riveting questions to which the panelists were more than happy to speak to. Only 3% of females in Nigeria, according to a survey done by PwC, say that a career in technology is their first choice. The only subject where girls enroll more than boys within, you know, sciences is biology. University level, we have 13% of males taking engineering courses compared to 2% of females. And women make on average about 22% of STEM university graduates in Nigeria each year. Many of you here think that you don't use technology a lot, but you do. Are you not on WhatsApp? I'm saying here to us that we all actually use technology more than we realize. All of us in here can upskill and develop ourselves using technology, no matter how much we feel like we're not into it or not, because there are many apps that we can use. There's apps like Udemy, Coursera, there's LinkedIn Learning, and they are very, very simple. My mother is 71 years old, and she uses these things. If my mom can use these things at 71, all of us here can use it. The disabled people these days are empowered through technology. We have so many apps, so many gadgets that help us to, to be at par with other people. But what makes the difference is the, it's a particular software called Jobs. Jobs, jobs access with speech. Is actually speech imputed into the computer. So that when a visually person handles the computer, any command you put in, it tells you what you are doing. One of the things our current educational system, you know, unfortunately doesn't afford a lot of our children is that ability with the exposure of the curriculum to teach them how to think. We tell them what to think, but in terms of actually that way of teaching them how to think, how to step back, look at a problem, analyze it, and systematically think through problem solving. And STEM is just basically a tool that we are using to achieve that. Parents also need to help the children, you know, get a bit more exposure, help them to download these apps that they can practice with at home, you know, help them to talk to them about it. Let the, the children be able to talk to their parents about what they like, what they're struggling with, and how they can come in to support the children. But I think the main thing is to encourage the parents to support the children in terms of choosing extracurricular activities. And when you actually sign up for these activities, follow it through, see them grow, see them develop, expose them to, you know, to other things, let them collaborate, let them do a lot of learning online, and you will see the STEM skills in them will keep thriving and you know, developing. Many of us know about the Arise Pink Bucket. And so in terms of, yes, please, let's celebrate that. And you're also committed to the Sustainable Development Goals. In what way can you, as uh, Mrs. Kola Yineng has said, support women in terms of providing the resources required to ensure that they're able to embrace technology? Okay, uh, thank you, Tope, for letting them know that technology is actually expensive. It really is. And that's why when we talk about gender equality, we are actually talking about disparity in our spending power. It's not so much about you wanting to wear the trousers at home. It's not that. It's the inability for a woman to make an impact in a nation or in a community, immediate environment, because she doesn't have as much resources. I always tease my sugar. I said, ah, you men have more money than we do. You have more resources than we do. But having said that, arise as gone into the villages. It will surprise you to know, Ayo, we have done something amazing. I think it will be about um, maybe 10, 14 years old. We go into the villages and we have put there. Remember, I've confessed to you, I'm not a very techie person. 
I use technology because I need it. I use the ones I need. Okay? Yes, but with far, one of the first things we did in our Adopt a Village project in Dafara was to build a school. And in that school, we put in a fully fledged computerized library. Fully fledged. A generator to make sure that the computers are there for the use of these children who have never seen a computer before and have never worked on one. Then we did the Skills Acquisition Academy to train those who would teach our children. Women, please embrace equity. You need to have money. We need it. Thank you so much. Can we celebrate that? We congratulate the Handmaidens Women in Leadership for a fully successful event, and we hope that this empowerment initiative will continue to motivate and drive women of all ages to embrace technology in all its usefulness. You can join us this Tuesday for our Digging for Gold service holding live in the sanctuary from 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday morning, we will be having an hour of worship and prayer at the Carpe Diem service from 6.30 a.m. The meetings will be meeting on Wednesday right here in the sanctuary from 12.30 p.m. So ladies, please invite someone as it promises to be a great time. You can join us on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. for our prayer, praise, and Pentecost service. And then on Friday from noon, we will be having our He is Lord's Praise Our service where we spend one hour of worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To ensure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming services, kindly reach out to the church's dedicated WhatsApp number to receive notifications prior to the start of each and every service. Books by Pastor ID and Pastor Dr. Shiju can be purchased at the bookstand downstairs right after the service. If you're online and you need a copy, please call the number currently showing on your screens. Have you heard? Have you heard the big news? It's Dr. Shiju again. That's right. And the big news is the Arise Community Insurance Scheme, a vision of Arise Foundation. And now everyone is dancing. The market woman, the woman on the street, the village folks, the janitor, and the homemaker. There is ecstasy because the change agent, Dr. Shiju Iliomade, has raised the bar again. She gave them primary health care, modern hospitals, access to clean water, modern schools for education and skills development and Empowerment Academy to put them to work. And now, their compassion hero wants to touch their life in a different way, even when they may not be around. With 15,000 Naira per year, you can give cover for life or permanent disability for one person, and you can give cover to as many lives as you can. Arise Community Insurance Scheme, the gift of their life. You can support the Arise Community Insurance Scheme by making a minimum payment of 15,000 Naira per person. You can send it to the account details currently showing on your screens. Or you may also support a whole community by giving most generously. My name is Alabode Shadrach. I am 15 years old. I am in Basic 6. The name of my school is Hope Center School. I start Hope Center School with some things. I don't know how to read, but I thank God for Hope Center. Now I can speak in English and read. My father is lit in 2018. My father is the one that encouraged me in my life, in my daily life. I thank God for my father. If not because of my father, I would be like doubt. It's my father that tell me some story about life. I thank God for my father, for his encouragement for me. My father is the one that God chose to me, to, to be a better boy. Hope Center have done a great thing for me when my father was late. 
Hope Center pays all things like house rent, buy food for us in the house. If you can commit to give 1,000 Naira every month or 12,000 Naira for one year, you are a partner. And guess what? If you commit 12,000 Naira at once, you'll get 1 million Naira personal accident insurance. And that covers both road and domestic accidents. Plus 100,000 Naira reimbursement for medical expenses, courtesy our insurance partners. For details, visit our website. His Love Foundation. Love in action. Has the Lord been good to you? Do you have reasons to celebrate? But why not share it with the whole world? You can send us your testimonies to the numbers currently showing on the screen and be a blessing and encourage somebody out there. Remember that Sunday school starts at 7.30 a.m. every Sunday. Please purchase your Sunday school manuals downstairs at the book stand. I know that I can stay. I know that I can stay. No matter what comes my way. No matter what may come my way. Jesus, my life. My life is in your hands. Sign it. What's today's date? Fifth. Fifth of March. I can afford to see it. That's my old life. Pastor <laughs> Stardust. Thank you so much, sir. Pastor Stardust. Troubles, they don't last always. Troubles, they don't last always. Ah, for there's a friend named Jesus. For there's a friend named Jesus. Who will wipe every tears. Who will wipe every tears away. And if your heart is broken. And if your heart is broken. Just lift those hands and sing. Just lift your hands Come on, sing it with me. I know I can. Registration for the pilgrimage with Daddy and Mommy Geo stated for the 16th to the 24th of May is now closed. This is to enable us plan well for the accommodations. So those who have not fully completed their payments by the 10th of March may be refunded. In all, we say a big thank you to you all. To give your offerings and your tithes as well as other donations in foreign currencies, you can use the Give tab on the City of David website at www.cityofdavidng.org. You can also use the link currently showing on your screens or scan the barcodes for direct navigation. Amen starts their Men in Dialogue series with a study of the intentional God or the Sea of Purpose by Pastor Idowu Iliomade. The date is Monday the 13th of March and the time is from 7 p.m. You can join this session via the links on the screen all men are encouraged to please buy the books from the book stand downstairs and join the online book study. Please note that we have new employment opportunities on the iCare job portal. Interested candidates should please visit the iCare page to register and submit your applications. The induction picnic for brethren who turned 50 years old between 2020 and now will now hold on the 26th of March 2023 from 11 a.m. right after the first service at Blue Moon Hotel, Water Corporation Road, Victoria Island. There will be health talks, Bible quizzes and many games, music and dancing competition with lots to eat and drink. You also stand a chance to win many prizes and lastly, an opportunity for elders in the church to meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis. All new members from 2020 to date are invited to attend. Let me ask you a question. Do you have clothes in your wardrobe that you haven't worn in years? Shoes you can't even remember that you own? Why not put a smile on someone's face today and put them for better use? It's new to me charity shop doors are always open to members of the church to bring in clothes, shoes and household materials for donations to be sold at affordable prices. To donate, kindly visit the link currently showing on the screen or contact It's New To Me Center on any of the numbers as you can see.
as we approach yet another defining moment in our nation's history. We pray that the hand of God will be seen and felt in this land, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for listening and watching. This is the City of David, where the love of God reigns and dreams come true, where legends are born and tomorrow's history is experienced today.